Right. Starting. C equals zero. I couldn't find a picture that meant a zero, so you have a picture of a kitten instead. Um, it's like SQL Server, but it isn't. Um, it is SQL Server. It's a bodged version of SQL Server 2008, where they've basically taken out a lot of functionality and hidden a lot more. Um, one of the really interesting things is that you don't have a server. So even though it says SQL, even though it says you know SQL, a SQL Azure, and you connect to your server, you don't actually connect to your own server. So what you can, what you have in Azure is you can have your racks and you can have your load balancer and what, it, and what you can do is when you, can, when, you, when you say connect you give it your credentials so you give it your user ID, you give it your password and the load balancer points you at the place where your database is. That's your, that's your database one. Now normally you can go use, you know, so you go use DB2 you can't do that in Azure. That's because it probably isn't even on the same computer. Probably not on the same rack. So there is no use statement. You have to connect to every database specifically, um, which, is which is one of the differences between SQL Server and Azure. Um, you can use all the existing client libraries, so you know all the .NET stuff, all that will still work. Um, it's pretty easy. Like I say, it's just a matter of getting the connection string right and understanding that you don't have a server. So, there are, so although there is a SQL server there, it's not yours and you don't have, you don't have sole rights to it. Um, so you can, have other, you can have other customers' databases on the in the same area, but you have no access to them. This is what multi-tenancy goes on and on about. Um, set up your firewall. So if you don't set up your firewall, you won't be able to connect. Simple as that. There's no, connection, there's no external connections by default into Azure. So those are the connections that, that's the connections that I have set up um, so I can get labs, which is Redgate Labs, which is hosted on Azure. Another thing about connecting is if you're connecting to a SQL server on a local network, you're pretty much guaranteed that there's not going to be network problems. You know, okay. Unless, you, unless the rats get in or somebody spills a cup of coffee on the server, you're going to be fine, generally. As SQL Azure and cloud services in general are very not that. You have to make sure that you have complete retry logic in, around all your statements. Microsoft have got good, some good example pages on MSDN about this um, with code samples, so you can actually just copy their code. One of the reasons for this, again, is load balancing. Um, so you think you've got a SQL Server database. In fact, you don't. You've ha you have three copies of it running simultaneously. Um, how, they, how they do that, I don't know. But you can have... So when you ask for your DB, you can go to one of three, anywhere between two and five, instances of your SQL Server, instances of your database. So if, for example, um, they move your server, you can actually lose your connection through the load balancer. So you can be connected and memory working on this one, and because they're always load balancing the servers, they can actually disconnect your setting and say, right, we're now going to connect to a different DB while we move that one out of the way. Um, there are also other things, so if you're throttling, if you're performing a split in federation, which I'll go into later, um, if you've got a rogue temp DB, so if you're using, you do have access to TempDB, but if you start using too much of it, they're going to say, right, oi, off, and disconnect you. Um, if your memory use gets out of control, if you've got a query that's using up too much memory, or if you have a connection that's open for more than 24 hours, say, for example, Query Analyzer. Just leave Query Analyzer on the machine, it'll chop you off after 24 hours of connection. Um, there are a couple of other features, so you can actually encrypt your data, um, and also a server certificate false avoid man in the middle. I copied that from one of Microsoft slides, and I don't really understand it, but it sounded important, so I copied it up here. Um, it's pretty important, but it's um, it you know if one of the things is if you're putting data on the cloud, you're not going to put your customers' credit card data, you're not going to put your HR records, you're going to put stuff that is not mission critical is not going to be 
it's very se highly sensitive data because people are still very, you know, rightfully very concerned about these kind of things. Right, what's my next slide? I can't even remember now. Oh, yes, it's my copied slide from SQL in the city. Right, so when you connect to SQL Server, what actually goes on? So you connect over the internet to your load balancer using TDS, which is just the standard SQL Server protocol. The load balancer then checks that you're allowed and passes you through to various gateways, which can then pass you through to different SQL servers, which are then replicated on different racks. It's complicated. Basically, you don't need to know this. All you say is, I connect, and occasionally Microsoft are going to, occasionally they're going to disconnect me. I have to ensure that I reconnect. Um, but it goes to show that so much of the cleverness in Azure is just getting the load balancer right, <coughs> making sure that the, the load on the various servers means that all applications are running on an equal footing. Right, compatibility. It's like SQL Server, but not. So, tables require clustered indexes. You can create a table without a clustered index, but as soon as you attempt to insert into it, it'll fall over in a massive heap. So, which is quite annoying, because you can successfully migrate your, your schema to Azure, then as soon as you try to migrate your data, it just goes fall over, because I'm not allowed to insert into that table. Which is a bit strange. Right. Also, you don't have SQL Agent. You don't get to run any tasks over, you know, on a routine. So you can't re-index, you can't, you can't uh, optimize, you can't do any of those routine database maintenance tasks using SQL Agent. You'd have to do it via some other mechanism, either doing it manually or writing some PowerShell or something that would, that would do it on, an, on, a, on a regular basis. There's no XML support, there's no sparse columns, no file streams. No partitions, no full text indexes, no SQL CLR, no encryption, and no service broker. And it's a moving target. SQL Azure, because it's hosted, it can be updated. And they've, they are aiming for three releases of Azure a year. Unlike a release, bless you. Unlike a release once every three years for SQL Server. So there's going to be a lot of catch up. So they're going to release new features for Azure. They're going to improve it. They're going, at least we do know, I think, they're going to be changing the version number of Azure. So there was, I, thought, I read something a while back which said they weren't even going to be changing the version so you couldn't tell them apart, which would just be insane for us. Um, but I think I'm completely mistaken on that. Um, and these changes can be breaking changes. So they can put in something that previously, previous stuff would have worked and now won't. I think they, I don't know how they expect app maintainers to deal with breaking changes. I think they're probably just covering themselves there in case they ever need to do it. Presumably they're going, they would um, be able to, they'd put some information on their blogs months in advance of that to say this feature is going to be happening. Um, so you have to keep up to date, I would imagine, on the Azure blogs. Sorry? No, you have no control over the maintenance cycle of the, of the Azure database, which is both a benefit and a, and a distraction. So I can just create a SQL Azure database, and I don't need to worry about it anymore. I don't need to worry about its file, how its log grows, anything like that. It just sits there. However, yes, you know you can't do any of the routine packing, repacking of your indexes, or you know updating your statistics and that. Well, well, I, I can't um, you know, make sure that some potentially breaking change doesn't come in when the CEO. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I honestly don't think they would do breaking changes unless they, there is a technical reason why they have to. And then it's going to be, I would imagine, months in advance. But I don't believe they're going to. Yeah, I mean, you can't guarantee. It's a cloud service. You know, um, these things aren't foolproof, just like any server room isn't foolproof either. So there are a few different flavors of Azure, of SQL Azure. Basically, you pay per sized use, which is nice. So even if you say, I want to create a 50 gig database, if your 50 gig database only contains a gig of data, you're only going to pay for the smallest 
for the smallest quantity of that, for the smallest amount of that data. I think it's max per day. And that can, where's my mask on? Ah, there it is. Um, so, where are we? So if I jump back to the price slide, you can see that there are lots of different additions and sizes of Azure. They start off at $10 a month and then rapidly go up. But the largest database you can have at the moment on Azure is 50 gigabytes. If you have 50 gigabytes of data, you're going to have problems. They're going to, pro they're going to be upping that. They used to, it used to be a lot lower, and it's gradually going up. I think they're going to go up to about 300 gigabytes quite soon. Um, but 50 gigabytes per month is going to cost you $500 per month, which, but it, whichever way you slice it, isn't cheap. And when you create a database, all you do is you say, I would like to have a business database or a web database, and how, what's its maximum size that I'm going to allow. The only difference between business and web is size. Web is one gigabyte or five gigabytes. It business is all the sizes up to 50 beyond that. If you do need to go over 50 gigabytes, you're going to have to use federations. Um, and I'll be going into that a little bit later. Backing up. Okay, that's kind of a lie. You can actually back up, sort of. Um, what you can do is you can create a database as a copy of, so it will just take a transactionally consistent copy of your database and just put it alongside. Um, it's a mechanism, but it's not really a backup. Um, you can export as a backpack, which is basically a DAC pack with data. I think that's a, that's a CTP, uh, and a backpack is basically a zipped file containing an XML representation of your data, which doesn't sound particularly nice. I haven't yet um, talked to the guys from Microsoft about this in more detail, but when I was talking to, to Grant, Grant Fritchley about this, it's kind of like, if I want to back up a database as a file, what binary data file is there that I can make as a database? There isn't one, because you can't really create a BAK file yourself. It's not a real, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a too closely linked SQL Server. So what other format can you actually create a database on disk as? And we kind of went, hmm, yeah. There are not really many options there. Um, you can restore to point in time in the last two weeks. I think that's coming out soon. I don't think it's available yet. Um, but the idea is that, you know, say you have the, somebody drops the customer's table, you can go back up to, up to two weeks and say, I'd, restore, I'd like to restore the database as it was at this point in time to the minute, to the second, and I believe they're going to go all the way down to the millisecond. So you can actually get your database out at that stage. It's not quick. From what we've, from what we've seen, it looks like it could take up to 10 hours to get your database, which is a long time. Um, but, and it's only in the two weeks. So if you've got gradual data corruption over time, You've got, no, you've got no comeback. Bulk copy, you can get your data out. Data sync services, I'm going to go into that into, in a small amount of detail, which is just a way of syncing your data across two different, um, two different sites. There's some commandlets by Cerebrata. So these are just PowerShell, which can allow you to back up. There's Redgate SQL as your backup. That'll be my baby then. Um, and from what we know, there's going to be some sort of backup tool from Microsoft in September, but the quote is, it may not be the backup that you're after. Yeah? Um, does the point of time still require a human at Microsoft to actually do that? I don't think so, no. It is just a, from what I understand, it's just a matter of just, you want a point in time backup, you do it via the admin console, and eventually your backup appears. Is it, um, is it like a granular, like once an hour, or is it a full T-log backup? It's a full T-log backup, so you can go down to the millisecond. They've got accuracy down to the millisecond, and even below that, in, in, according to their talks that they were doing at TechEd. Okay? That is a basic introduction to SQL Server. Um, that's really all there is to it in SQL Azure. Now we go on to some new stuff, which I hope most of you won't be familiar with.